Hi everyone, I hope that you're all keeping well and that you're keeping nice and warm. With winter coming to an end, I wanted to drop a quick update on the air source heat pump that's been keeping our Victorian farmhouse nice and warm and cozy. For those of you that haven't seen our videos on the My Home Farm YouTube channel, we installed an 18 kilowatt unit from Global Energy Systems in 2019. The first three winters were filled with challenges, requiring numerous visits from the installers to address multiple issues. I'm not going to get into those here, but I will include links in the description for anyone that's interested in our earlier experiences. When we started out in 2019, we were pretty new to the whole heat pump scene and just went along with what the manufacturer suggested for us and how we should be running our system. They told us we didn't have weather compensation on our unit, so they recommended that we keep our heating running at a steady 45 degrees centigrade. Doing that, we had a seasonal coefficient of performance or SCOP of about 2.71, and that included heating our hot water to 44 degrees centigrade. As we became more familiar and adventurous with our heat pump, we decided to explore the control panel a bit more. Many of the sections were password protected, but the manufacturer did give us the password when we requested it, and it was here that we discovered that our heat pump did in fact have weather compensation, and I'll get onto that in a moment. Through our own research, advice from installers, and discussions with other homeowners on the Renewable Heating Hub forums, we've identified that our buffer tank is significantly contributing to our system's lower coefficient of performance and its overall inefficiency. This unbalanced buffer tank has resulted in specific areas of the house not coming to temperature, especially in the northern end where our TV room is. Despite several efforts to correct this, the installer added more distribution pumps on repeated visits, increasing the total number of distribution pumps to five, which has never resolved the issue and has increased our total running costs. Our experience clearly underscores the need for expert installation accurate configuration and careful balancing of buffered systems in heat pump setups and it appears that very few installers in the UK have this level of expertise. So this April we're planning to bypass the buffer tank and reconfigure our entire system to operate as an open loop. So it's fair to say that our system is fundamentally flawed and far from being perfect. For context, let's take a look at our energy usage. In January 2021, with the heat pump set to 45 degrees centigrade and hot water heated to 44 degrees centigrade, our system consumed 2,231 kilowatt hours of electricity, averaging about 72 kilowatt hours per day. Fast forward to this winter, from mid-December 2023 to mid-March 2024, where we switched exclusively to weather compensation, we saw total electricity use of 3,312 kilowatt hours, which breaks down to roughly 37 kilowatt hours per day, which is a significant reduction in consumption, and our COP for this period jumped up to 3.09. In terms of heating performance, every room except the TV room, which sits at the end of the heating circuit, regularly hits at least 21 degrees centigrade. In spaces with underfloor heating, such as the kitchen and living area, the temperature frequently surpasses 22 and a half degrees centigrade. This variance in temperatures across different parts of the house clearly indicates that our system is not properly balanced and is in desperate need for the buffer tank and zones to be removed. It is important to highlight that with weather compensation activated, the radiators only feel slightly warm when you touch them, in contrast to when the system runs at say 45 degrees centigrade, where they are noticeably warmer when you touch them. Despite this, the rooms all feel adequately warm and cozy, with most thermostats reading at least 21 degrees centigrade, all while running at about half the previous costs. From a financial standpoint, without a smart meter and being on a standard tariff of 29p per kilowatt hour, our monthly heating expenses average about 320 pounds. Before the energy crisis, this consumption would have cost us about 120 pounds per month, making it much cheaper to run than our old oil boiler. During this time period, our 6.16 kilowatt PV system contributed an additional 600 kilowatt hours towards our energy needs, which further reduced some of our running costs. So all in all, switching from set point heating to weather compensation is 1000% the way to go. We're using far less electricity and our comfort levels across the house haven't changed. One of the primary goals of creating this video is to create awareness about the potential underutilization of weather compensation in heat pump systems. Homeowners with heat pumps might not realize that their systems could actually have weather compensation turned off. Installers frequently set the heat pump to a fixed set point like 45 degrees centigrade 
So avoid the hassle of addressing homeowners' queries about why their radiators aren't as hot as they expect them to be. This approach is typically chosen for simplicity and to reduce complaints, especially for those people transitioning from gas or oil boilers who might be accustomed to feeling hotter radiators. Trust me, slightly warm rads do still heat rooms. So as I've mentioned, in April, we'll be diving into some serious modifications on our heat pump system, where we'll be bypassing the buffer tank and removing all heating zones, which will hopefully create a far more efficient open loop system. Considering that our current setup has hit a COP of three this winter, I'm actually quite excited about the prospect of getting the system even more efficient. And our goal is to get a system that not only heats the whole house more effectively, especially the tricky TV room at the end of the house, but also does so using less electricity. If you're interested in seeing this work, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Before we wrap up, if you've got any burning questions about weather compensation, or you're wondering if your system's running as efficiently as it could, or you're just curious about heat pumps in general, please head over to the Renewable Heating Hub forums at www.renewableheatinghub.co.uk forward slash forums. And I've popped the link in the description below. So I hope that you have found this video useful and interesting. If you did, please hit the like button and we'll see you soon in our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.